I welcome you all uh, to Nextopia Medical Lectures. Our uh, next topic of discussion is nephron hemodynamics, uh, continuation of nephron hemodynamics to understand basics of nephrology. Till yesterday, we have discussed what is uh, uh, what are the different uh, functions on the whole of of the kidneys. Uh, how does the nephron uh, is organized in the kidney? How is it organized in the kidneys? And uh, how does it function? We have seen briefly. Today we shall be discussing slightly more details about this. So yesterday in my class I have uh, I have uh, uh, covered tubuloglomerular feedback mechanism. So we will continue with that. And then today in today's class we shall understand what are the different pressures acting across the glomerular basement membrane. What are the different uh, uh, driving forces uh, that bring about the ultrafiltrate which passes along the tubules uh, which gets filter, which, which gets reabsorbed and secreted and in the end uh, the urine is excreted out. So all these we shall be discussing in details today. Uh, let us begin the discussion, right? Uh, Give me a second. Yes. yes. So this is the tubuloglomerular feedback which I was discussing yesterday. This is the tubuloglomerular feedback which I discussed yesterday. The tubuloglomerular feedback which I discussed yesterday. Uh, in this I told you that whenever there is delivery of sodium, high uh, solute load uh, of uh, sodium into the glomerular, uh, across the glomerular base membrane into the Bowman's cup, from the Bowman's cup to the proximal convoluted tubule, from the proximal convoluted tubule to the descending limb of loop of Henle, from the descending limb of loop of Henle to the loop of Henle hairpin bend, from there to the ascending limb of loop of Henle, thick ascending loop, limb of loop of Henle and its union to the distal convoluted tubule. So thick ascending limb of loop of Henle and its union to the distal corner tubule, we have got what is known as macula densa. We have got what is known as, so this area, this area macula densa which senses the solute, that is which senses the sodium load and uh, this causes constriction, vasoconstriction of afferent renal arteriole. This is the tubuloglomerular feedback. What will happen if there is constriction of the afferent renal arteriole? What will have imagined there is constriction of the afferent renal arteriole? Constriction of the afferent renal arteriole results in less blood supply to the uh, nephron. So that results in fall in GFR, decreased renal plasma flow. This is what is the tubuloglomerular feedback we need to understand. This is what is the tubuloglomerular feedback we need to understand, right? Uh, so to understand this flow pressure gradient uh, sequence, we need to get a uh, 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 look on the uh, equation that is when uh, yesterday also I told you that each nephron individual nephron connected to other nephron in series each nephron is connected in series and in series flow should be equal across the uh, you know across all the points across all the points the flow should be equal if a connection is given in series is it not two different kidneys are connected to each other the nephrons in two different kidneys are connected to each other right and left in a parallel fashion whereas within the same kidney the nephrons are in series fashion when you consider the blood flow so afferent renal arteriole from there to the tuft of capillaries from there to the uh, uh, vasa recta the peritubular capillaries and all so this uh, uh, this entire uh, flow if you uh, try to fix it into an equation and try to understand how the pressure and resistance play a role in maintaining this flow and each other we have an equation called as flow equals to uh, pressure gradient taken over resistance. So flow equals to flow equals to pressure gradient taken over the resistance. 
all right pressure gradient taken over resistance so here you see that flow is uh, flow that is blood flow across the capillaries is directly proportional to the pressure gradient it is directly proportional to the pressure gradient please remember this point it is directly proportional to the pressure gradient and uh, it is inversely proportional to the resistance what does that mean if uh, the flow is high the pressure across the capillaries will be high if pressure across the capillary is high then the blood flow across these capillaries is high if the resistance across these capillaries if the resistance is more say suppose vasoconstriction resistance is more the flow decreases if resistance is less the flow increases right all right so to move on to uh, to un further understand this to further understand this uh we all know that blood blood flows from high pressure area to low pressure pressure areas blood flows from high pressure areas to low pressure areas is it not blood is flowing across the high pressure area to low pressure area there are two factors that decrease the blood flow please understand this there are two factors that decrease the blood flow the first factor is Uh, whenever there is decrease in pressure, obviously directly proportional. So pre if pressure is falling down, the flow decreases, blood flow decreases, renal plasma flow decreases, GFR decreases. So this is how you need to interpret actually to understand this. Then if suppose the second factor, the second factor which uh, is uh, you know here which is affected is increase in resistance at any point throughout the circuit also decreases the flow. So whenever there is falling the pressure pressure, it decreases flow. whenever there is rise in the resistance there is decrease in flow all right with this equation we it's very easy to understand now here you need to with this slide you try to understand that glomerulus what is the function of glomerulus to filter is it not so glomerular capillaries are filtering capillaries can you call it yes so glomerular capillaries are filtering capillaries glomerular capillaries are high pressure blood vessels high pressure blood vessels this you need to understand high pressure means what high flow is it not so in the glomerulus if you see high pressure blood flow across the capillaries all right this is the bowman's cup so here we have got the glomerulus all right so this glomerulus is a high pressure filtering capillary high pressure filtering capillary and this is responsible for gfr please remember unopposed action of uh, action on filtration It results in increase in glomerular filtration rate (GFR), which is very important clinically also to understand. If GFR decreases, th that is what happens in many of the uh, acute kidney injuries and all, wherein the GFR reduced. Is it not? That is because of either disease in the glomerulus or in the tubules. We will discuss that subsequently further. But for now, please understand that the glomerular capillaries are the high pressure filtering vessels, and whereas the peritubular capillaries, if you see the peritubular, where is the peritubular capillaries? where are the peritubular capillaries so along these tubules all right along these tubules if you see there are peritubular capillaries and we have got at the capillaries which surround the hair pin bend are called as vasa recta so in these areas what happens there is low pressure low pressure means what if there is low pressure gradient i told you that uh, if there is low pressure gradient it decreases the flow because pressure is directly proportional to flow a flow is directly proportional to whatever it is so peritubular capillaries what is the function reabsorption peritubular capillaries the function is reabsorption whereas uh, uh, at low pressure reabsorption occurs is it not filtering filtering occurs at high pressure glomerular filtration occurs at high pressure reabsorption occurs because of low pressure in the capillaries uh, to further understand this please remember that the next slide the next slide tells us that the glomerular capillaries have a very high hydrostatic pressure now i am introducing you a new term here hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillaries you have to understand this to understand the pressure dynamics in the glomerulus so there are two different there are different pressures that uh, act along the glomerular capillaries one of the most important pressures uh, which is very significant in formation of gfr in formation of the uh, filtrate the glomerular filtrate is the hydrostatic pressure the tissue hydro glomerular capillaries hydrostatic pressure so the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure is very very high it is very high the glomerular capillary pressure is very high pressure and because because why because of the, the efferent blood vessels are very narrow whereas the afferent blood vessels are you know 
uh, wide efferent blood vessels are narrow which provide very high resistance what will happen to high, whenever there is high resistance what will happen to the flow flow decreases is it not so actually efferent blood vessels are providing very high resistance hence the pressure inside the glomerular capillaries increases the tissue hydrostatic pressure increases it is because of this tissue hydrostatic pressure the blood starts getting filtered along the glomerular basement membrane what are the components of basement membrane we'll see subsequently likewise there is a large pressure drop as the blood flows uh, through this high resistance blood vessels and the peritoneal capillaries which have very low hydrostatic pressure so peritoneal capillaries have low hydrostatic pressure glomerulus has very high hydrostatic pressure there is a fall in the pressure from high to low blood flows across high pressure areas to low pressure areas flow occurs across high pressure areas to low pressure areas. this is what i want to you to understand from the glomerulus when blood comes to the peritoneal capillaries the pressures there, there is a large drop in the pressure all right so uh, now we have to understand one concept here which is uh, about vasoconstriction and vasodilation of afferent and efferent renal arteries examiner is going to ask you in many multiple exams i have seen in usmle i have seen in neat pg i have seen such questions in foreign medical graduate exams i have seen such questions in different entrances uh, and this question is what will happen if you vasoconstrict the afferent renal artery which disease causes vasoconstriction of afferent renal or vasodilation of afferent renal artery or efferent renal artery and what will what is it, its effect of vasoconstriction or vasodilation on to the on to the uh, what i mean to say the gfr right so let us see now let us try to understand this concept this concept is going to definitely fetch you one or two marks whatever entrance you are writing so please concentrate now so whenever uh, an arterial vasoconstricts there is an increase in resistance please remember when an arterial vasoconstrict there is increase in resistance all right so whenever the arterial vasoconstricts there is an increase in resistance this increase in resistance uh, it results in two things what will happen if there is increase in resistance flow uh sorry uh, whenever there is uh, vasoconstriction there is decrease in resistance i'm sorry decrease in resistance Wait one second yeah so vasoconstriction causes decrease in resistance yes so this results in what will happen if uh, uh, there is a uh, increase in resistance increase in resistance across the uh, blood vessel what will happen to the flow because it is inversely proportional as the resistance increases flow decreases is it not the flow across the blood vessel decreases please remember this point the flow across the blood vessel decreases and what will if pressure builds up uh, or increases that is before the point of resistance <coughs> say suppose <coughs> you try to understand that this is the blood vessel this is the blood vessel all right and here somewhere this is the point of resistance here somewhere you have got some point of resistance here so what will happen to whenever there is a uh, vasoconstriction that is imagine that this area is undergoing vasoconstriction all right this area is undergoing vasoconstriction so what will happen to resistance in this area resistance is increased in this area of the arterial so what will happen to flow here flow definitely flow with the pressure by q decreases is it not so the pressure builds up what will happen to the pressure because flow is decreasing the, at the point beyond the resistance beyond the vasoconstriction what will happen to the point before the resistance because of build up of blood, blood flow what will happen is the pre, the pressure there builds up and uh, the pressure increases at a point where the uh, just before that is before the point of resistance and pressure obviously decreases after the point of resistance there is exactly opposite happens with the with respect to when arterial dilates whenever an arterial dilates uh, if you are not following it i'll repeat it whenever an arterial dilates so suppose this is the artery which which has dilated all right a dilated artery say suppose so this is the point of dilation say suppose this is the point of dilation what will happen to the dilated artery whenever there is dilatation of the arteriole dilation of the arteriole the resistance decreases 
as the resistance decreases two things happen the flow across this area increase the flow across this area increases and the second most important point is the pressure decreases at the point of resistance that is before the point of resistance before the point of resistance the pressure decreases whereas the pressure rises after the point of resistance with this you need to understand what will happen to uh, you need to answer what will happen to the afferent renal arteriole and the efferent renal arteriole what will happen to the afferent and efferent renal arteriole uh, upon its constriction and vasodilation we will have to understand this with the help of this slide right if you are able to follow this slide what will happen to the pressures what will happen to the glomerular capillary pressure what will happen to the peritubular capillary pressure and what will happen to the renal plasma flow or nephron plasma flow let us see uh, afferent renal arteriole the first point here is afferent renal arteriole constriction constriction of afferent renal arteriole decreases the capillary pressure is it not it decreases the capillary pressure because i told you that uh, whenever a blood vessel constricts vasoconstriction of blood vessel causes a decrease in the pressure all right so fall in the pressure uh, glomerular capillary pressure decreases here and the what will happen to the peritubular cap i told you that glomerular usually normally glomerular capillary pressure is higher and peritubular capillary pressure is lower what will happen if glomerular capillary pressure decreases peritubular mm -hmm. capillary pressure further decreases and this results in what will happen to the plasma flow if pressure is low pressure is directly proportional to flow is it not pressure is directly proportional to flow if pressure decreases the flow also decreases afferent renal arteriole if it dilates what will happen if afferent renal arteriole dilates the pressure the glomerular capillary pressure increases glomerular capillary pressure increases dilation causes increase in uh, pressure glomerular capillary pressure i am talking about afferent renal arteriole you should imagine that uh, this is the afferent i'll just draw for you yeah here we can see the afferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole so vasoconstriction of efferent arteriole decreases gfr how does it decrease gfr it decreases gfr because of whenever there is vasoconstriction blood flow decreases if blood flow decreases glomerular filtration rate decreases all right there is a fall in the pressure there is a fall in the capillary pressure and thus the glomerular filtration so you should imagine i am talking about afferent renal arteriole vasoconstriction and vasodilation so afferent renal arteriole if it dilates what will happen to the gfr the glomerular filtration pressure increases hence the gfr increases what will happen to the peritubular pressure as compared to normal values it increases so what will happen in the renal plasma flow and the gfr it also increases it also increases now next is efferent renal arteriole now understanding the mechanisms in efferent renal arteriole is very very important you need to understand the mechanism in efferent renal arteriole uh, to answer certain questions all right we'll discuss those questions and clinical scenarios also shortly from now but for now our we have to increase our foundation our basics to understand afferent renal arteriole and efferent renal arteriole in detail all right the vasodilation vasodilation in detail so vasoconstriction of efferent renal arteriole imagine efferent renal arteriole is undergoing vasoconstriction so what will happen to the blood flow before the point of resistance before the point that is in the afferent renal arteriole what will happen to the blood flow blood flow will be more is it not it cannot pass across the efferent renal arteriole hence the blood starts accumulating in the point before resistance that is the point before resistance is the afferent renal arteriole so what will happen here is because of this because of constriction of efferent renal arteriole the glomerular capillary pressure is very very high because of this uh, and further beyond the resistance what will happen the pressure falls so there is low pressure in the peritubular capillaries the low pressure in the peritubular capillaries all right low pressure in the peritubular capillaries and what will happen to the renal plasma flow renal plasma flow also falls down is it not because renal plasma flow also falls down you understand what is renal plasma flow the plasma flow that is occurring uh, across the capillaries of nephron all right nephron so the nephron plasma flow or renal plasma flow also decreases next uh, efferent renal arteriole if it dilates what will happen if efferent renal arteriole is dilating so the pressure uh, before it falls is it not what is the pressure before it the glomerular capillary pressure is actually the pressure before the efferent renal arteriole this falls so uh, what will happen to the peritubular capillary uh, uh, pressure peritubular capillary pressure increases 
peritubular capillary pressure increases whereas what will happen to the renal plasma flow renal plasma flow falls down renal plasma flow falls down so this again if you don't understand this you can repeat this video and see or else in the next uh, within 10 minutes from now maybe i'll be discussing real time disorders diseases wherein uh, which affect the afferent and efferent renal arterioles and this happens to be a very very important area of questions uh, that that are asked in various entrance exams right so to understand what we have discussed just now further i have brought a figure here which shows afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole afferent renal arteriole and efferent renal arteriole vasoconstriction vasodilation all right imagine a system wherein blood is coming across the from the afferent renal arteriole into the glomerular capillary then it is going into the efferent renal arteriole coming from the afferent renal arteriole going into the efferent renal arteriole from there it is going into the peritubular capillaries tuft of capillaries across the tubules along, along the tubules so what will happen if you constrict the inflow of blood in the afferent renal arteriole is what is shown in this figure in this figure you can see that uh, the afferent renal arteriole constriction vasoconstriction decreases gfr how and all just now we have discussed efferent renal arteriole vasoconstriction on the other hand increases gfr this is what you have to remember in the uh, the, the bottom line of this uh, i mean take home message of this discussion is uh, afferent renal arteriole the, there is uh, whenever there is vasoconstriction decreases gfr efferent renal arteriole vasoconstriction increases gfr so microvascular modulation of gfr this is very very important concept to understand various disorders this concept also helps us in understanding two important uh, drugs ac inhibitors and arbs and the newer oral anti diabetic drugs that is hgl2 inhibitors also tubuloglobular feedback and this mechanism is very very important in understanding the hgl2 inhibitors we will discuss that subsequently when we discuss pharmacology of uh, nephron uh, but here uh, let us let us now next uh, talk about glomerular filtration what is glomerular filtration how do you calculate it and uh, how is it uh, physiologically important to understand the various renal uh, diseases pathogenesis of the disease uh, to understand that glomerular filtration rate the glomerular filtration rate is a rate at which fluid is filtered into the bowman's space or bowman's capsule what is the unit of uh, glomerular filtration the glomerular filtration rate uh, is calculated in milliliters per minute or liters per day so in a young healthy adult it is about around 120 ml per minute or 180 ml per day how calculation and all in further classes i'll definitely discuss in one if uh, now this is very important if one kidney is removed what will happen to uh, that is half of the function of nephron is lost what will happen to the gfr please remember gfr does not decrease by 50% decreases only by 25% because this is not mathematics this human being does not follow the nephron do not follow mathematics is it not so half of the kidney half of the nephrons are removed deep gfr does not decrease by 50% it decreases by 25% because the other solitary kidney single kidney nephrons compensate they overwork they compensate and they work for 75% now your both the kidneys are working 50 50% so suppose one kidney is removed now one single kidney is uh, remaining and that one signal single kidney is working 75% 25% of gfr is reduced how and all we'll discuss this again when we will be discussing renal pathology all right shortly so now time has come now to understand what are the different pressures that play uh, a role in formation of gfr these pressures where are these pressures actually these pressures are uh, along the filtration membrane filtering membrane which we will discuss shortly so this filtering membrane pressures and all uh, there are two important pressures driving forces for filtrate from the plasma the to for the solutes to filter down into the bowman's capsule uh, there are two important uh, pressures types of pressures acting at four different points two important pressures acting at four different points uh, we will discuss this in detail now so what are the factors that determine net filtration pressure the there are four factors that determine net filtration pressure first one is hydrostatic pressure of glomerular capillary for better understanding i have labeled it as h1 hydrostatic h stands for hydrostatic pressure and one stands for the first point wherein it's acting so hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillaries oncotic pressure of the glomerular capillaries hydrostatic pressure of the bowman space oncotic pressure of the bowman space all right remember this point hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillaries oncotic pressure of the glomerular capillaries hydrostatic pressure of the bowman space oncotic pressure of the bowman space 
right oncotic pressure is determined by presence of plasma proteins is it not presence of plasma and where are these plasma proteins obviously these plasma proteins are present in the blood so presence of plasma proteins uh, creates a pressure we call it oncotic pressure in the glomerular capillaries similarly in the bowel space all right presence of proteins separately proteins which are excreted in the bowel space uh, now these normal values if you see normal values of uh, 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 oncotic pressures and hydrostatic pressures you see the highest among this is h1 that is the hydrostatic pressure of the bowel's capsule the hydrostatic pressure of the bowel's capsule the hydrostatic pressure of the bowel's capsule is uh, the hydrostatic pressure of the bowel's capsule is this one thing all right hydrostatic pressure of the bowel's capsule is the highest pressure that is playing a role important role rather in formation of gfr it is very very important uh, in the formation of gfr uh, and uh, because of unopposed hydrostatic pressure high hydrostatic pressure uh, the glomerular filtration rate is normal sometimes in most of the diseases not sometimes most of many mo most of the time it is this pressure which is affected that results in reduction of gfr in fact after taking nsaids also after taking certain nephrotoxic drugs or in different forms of aki actually this pressure is affected which initially reduces the uh, uh, what do you say gfr in most of the cases of pre renal aki wherein the hydrostatic pressure decreases all right so h1 here it is uh, 45 mm uh, mercury that is hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillaries the hydrostatic pressure of the bowel space is 8 mm oncotic pressure of the glomerular capillaries is 24 mm and oncotic pressure of the uh, tubular capillaries or tubular capillaries or bowel space if you see hardly any protein is excreted is it not plasma proteins are not excreted i told you oncotic pressure is maintained by plasma proteins so do you have any plasma protein in the bowel space except for certain disorders wherein we lose loose protein protein losing nephropathies protein losing nephropathies all right yes so my student is asking me hydrostatic pressure of glomerular uh, capillaries is 45 yes h1 is 45 i'll write here h1 here is 45 i'll show you with the help of a diagram also 45 mm of mercury and uh, whereas the oncotic pressure is around 24 around 24 mm and hydrostatic pressure of the bowel space is 8 mm and high oncotic pressure of the bowel space or oncotic pressure of the peritubular capillaries is so hardly any plasma protein is present is it not so it is zero so it is zero unless and until patient is suffering from protein losing enteropathies Uh, so, sorry protein losing nephropathies or pro proteinuria or diabetic protein, diabetic nephropathy or nephrotic syndrome wherein the person results in a nephrotic range proteinuria unless and until uh, these diseases are present oncotic pressure of the bowel space is not going to increase all right oncotic pressure of the bowel space so net field what is net filtration pressure now let us see what is net filtration pressure so here if you try to understand with the help of a diagram if you try to understand with the help of a diagram Uh, imagine that this is the bowel's cup and here we have got the glomerulus afferent renal arteriole and the efferent renal arteriole all right so here somewhere uh, we have got the this is the point of h1 so this is the point of h1 the hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillaries the hydrostatic pressure of the bowel space h2 then we have got oncotic pressure o1 oncotic pressure of the glomerulus and oncotic pressure of the bowel space oncotic pressure of the bowel's space all right so if you see this if you, uh, the if you subtract from h1 
the hydrostatic pressure of the bonds of the glomerular capillaries if you subtract from h1 the all other pressures which are overplaying here we get what is known as filtration pressure all right so 45 minus 24 minus 8 is around 13 mm millimeters mercury all right now let us uh, try to understand so this is how we calculate net filtration pressure net filtration pressure is calculated this way right now let us try to understand a uh, summary of factors controlling the gfr all right so what are the direct determinants and what are the uh, important factors that result in uh, so if you see textbooks uh, what is written in textbooks uh, is the pgc is the thing of hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillaries pbc is hydrostatic pressure of the bowman's cup this is what is the standard textbook uh, denotations or these are the abbreviations given to uh, different types of pressures in standard textbooks i just didn't want to confuse so i didn't introduce you initially so once you understand the concept i want to introduce to you uh, the constants here of gfr the uh, multiplication constants and the abbreviations which are used in standard textbooks for hydrostatic pressure and ongoing pressure for ongoing pressure the abbreviation that is the is used is pi pi so pi gc will stand for ongoing pressure of the glomerular capillaries pi b uh, bowman's cup that is pi bc will stand for ongoing pressure of the bowman's cup which is zero all right then p gc stands for hydrostatic pressure or tissue hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillaries and hydrostatic pressure of the bowman's cup is denoted by pbc so <coughs> major factors that determine this is how we calculate the filtration net filtration rate i told you see this is how this was a simple formula just i told you now we will try to summarize this into a clinically important formula to understand gfr so kf is a multiplication constant and uh, pgc stands for hydrostatic pressure glomerular capillaries minus hydrostatic pressure in the bowman space minus ongoing uh, pressure in the glomerular capillaries you can add minus ongoing pressure of bowman space also but we know that ongoing pressure of bowman space is zero so what are the major factors that tend to increase the magnitude of direct uh, determinant so let us see what are the important factors so whenever there is increased glomerular surface area increased glomerular surface area because of relaxation of the glomerular mesangial cells so mesangial cells the interstitial mesangium mesa the glomerular mesangial cells if they tend to relax dilate what will happen to the surface area of the glomerulus it increases so the multiplying constant increases hence gfr increases please remember gfr increases similarly the tissue uh, the hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillaries uh, any increase in the arterial pressure uh, say suppose high blood pressure the, tissue, the hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillary person suffering from hypertension glomerular capillary pressure also increases so that increases the renal artery pressure uh, fall in the afferent arteriolar resistance that is afferent arteriolar dilation this is very important afferent arteriolar dilation so dilation of the afferent renal arteriole increases gfr we all know this point and efferent renal arteriole constriction so whenever there is dilation of afferent renal arteriole or constriction of the efferent say suppose this is at my right hand is so suppose afferent renal arteriole left hand is efferent renal arteriole so whenever there is dilation of the afferent renal arteriole and constriction of the vase the efferent renal arteriole this causes in, uh, increase in gfr this causes increase in gfr so dilation of the afferent renal artery constriction of the efferent renal artery increases gfr where exactly opposite happens to uh, the hydrostatic pressure of the bowman's cup intra in, intra tubular pressure because of uh, obstruction of the tubule or extra extra renal urinary system uh, this results in fall in the gfr whereas ongoing pressure of the glomerular capillary is now Say suppose a person uh, because of increased systemic plasma ongoing pressure. Say suppose in entire body plasma proteins are some form of uh, proteins are increased that is resulting in increased systemic ongoing pressure. So obviously the ongoing pressure of the glomerular capillary increases, uh, or there is fall in the renal plasma flow that is uh, because of uh, rise of the 
oncotic uh, that is uh, oncotic pressure in the glomerular capillaries along the glomerular capillaries if the oncotic pressure decreases uh, sorry oncotic pressure increases along the capillaries so suppose plasma proteins are very high inside the capillaries of the nephron along the nephron that is the peritubular capillaries so what will happen is the oncotic pressure if plasma protein concentration is very high there definitely the oncotic pressure is increasing if the oncotic pressure is increasing that decreases the renal plasma flow hence gfr is reduced so take home message from this slide is dilation of afferent renal arterial constriction of efferent renal arterial increases gfr exactly opposite happens if you constrict the afferent renal arterial or in dilation of the efferent any disease causing these conditions and second important any disease affecting the plasma proteins also uh, involves affects gfr right all right all right now next important point is the hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillaries is the only force this is very important which helps in which promotes filtration the hydrostatic pressure the hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillaries is the only force that is affecting or that is promoting the filtration under normal conditions this is the main factor that determines gfr under normal conditions please remember this is the main factor that is uh, that determines the GFR. All right, the oncotic pressure of the plasma. I already told you it varies with concentration of plasma proteins. It varies with the concentration of plasma proteins. Why? Because the fluid that is filtered, but not it is the fluid that is filtered, but not the proteins. All right, it is the fluid that is filtered, but not the pro proteins. And uh, oncotic pressure actually opposes filtration. This point you have to remember. Oncotic pressure actually opposes filtration. You have to remember this point. And then uh, increases from the uh, beginning to the end. If you go for uh, from the glomerular, uh, if you go from the glomerular capillaries to the distal end of the nephron, if you go. to the collecting duct if you see all right proximal coronary tubule distal coronary tubule and the, and the collecting duct if you see so if you see point 1 here that is the oncotic pressure of the glomerular capillaries and oncotic pressure of the tubules point 2 here if you see from here to here because there is filtration secretion uh, less secretion more reabsorption the, so the final ultra filtrate that has that is formed in the form of urine has got very very uh, I mean the capillaries here uh, the solute and water is drained out from the capillaries so oncotic pressure increases actually from point 1 to point 2 if you see the there is increase in oncotic pressure from point 1 to point 2 in this diagram in this diagram if you see there is uh, from point 1 to point 2 if you see there is increase in pressures glomerular capillary pressure whereas uh, actually this increase in glomerular capillary pressure decreases the filtration opposes filtration that is what you will have to uh, understand here next the hydrostatic pressure in the Bowman's capsule we already discussed this the hydrostatic pressure in the Bowman's capsule also opposes filtration please remember this point it also opposes filtration the hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries was the driving force for filtration whereas hydrostatic pressure of the Bowman's cap capillary Bowman's cup is actually uh, is actually uh, affecting or opposing the filtration. All right. Uh, it reduces it. Uh, however, it increases and reduces filtration whenever there is an obstruction downstream. Uh, it, this concept is very important to understand because your patient is going to sometimes ask you, sir. Uh, what if I have stone in my uh, urinary tract? What if if I, if I have if I have stone in my ureters? Will it affect my kidneys? So if you say yes, then if, you, if this is the this is the physiological aspect wherein wherein the stone actually affects the kidneys, and this is how it affects. You'll have to understand this. So the hydrostatic pressure of the Bowman's cup actually opposes filtration. Normally, it is very very low. Uh, fairly low and and it is constant and does not affect the rate of filtration however it increases and 
reduces the filtration whenever there is an obstruction downstream so whenever there is obstruction downstream obstruction to the renal flow obstruction to the urine or uh, some obstruction in the form of benign prostate hypertrophy or renal stones ure the ureters are blocked or the urethra is blocked because of some reason we do not know uh, it might result in that is post renal failure due to increase in bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure <coughs> please remember this point so glomerular ca capillary hydrostatic pressure was actually increasing in case of high blood pressure uh, wherein systemically high blood pressure causing uh, you know high pressure in the systemic arterioles and all so glomerular arterioles also high pressure and high uh, pressure was causing you know uh, increase in hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillaries what causes increase in hydrostatic pressure of the bowman's cup if they ask you it is the post uh, renal failure or obstruction to the urine flow obstruction uh, in the in the form of a blocked ureter or a blocked urethra etc right so finally you need to understand the summary of this topic that is the hydrostatic pressure promotes gfr and oncotic pressure actually opposes gfr hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries promotes gfr oncotic pressure actually opposes gfr this is what you have to understand now let us try to understand the next topic next topic is also very important here and it is understanding the filtering membrane what is the filtering membrane let us try to understand what is filtering membrane here let us try to understand yes i'll adjust the slide for you all right then. i hope that it's good now all right so the membrane of glomerulus it is composed of three important uh, structures three main structures rather we have got capillary endothelial wall as you can see in this diagram capillary endothelial wall the glomerular basement membrane the bm stands here for basement membrane so we have capillary endothelial wall then we have got glomerular basement membrane and epithelial podocytes epithelial cell layer of podocytes so this is point number 3 this is endothelium of the capillary so this is the capillary lumen is it not this is the capillary lumen and uh, this is the basement membrane point number 2 glomerular basement membrane physiologically a very important area for filtration so this is the filtering membrane filtering membrane is composed of three important structures the capillary endothelial wall the glomerular basement membrane and the podocytes the epithelial podocytes so let us try to understand the importance of these capillary endothelial wall uh, ultra structure so the capillary endothelial wall is uh, having lot of fenestrations please note it has got lot of fenestrations uh, that have a variable magnitude and uh, slightly greater than protein actually so these fenestrations or holes if you common language if you call it uh, they are actually larger than the proteins larger than the proteins but they are negatively charged because they are neg negatively charged proteins are not excreted across this um, though the pores are larger size than proteins but they are negatively charged and proteins are also negatively charged uh, and uh, because uh, proteins are also negatively charged and because of this proteins are not excreted please remember one important property here next is the glomerular basement membrane is made up of a matrix of extra cellular negatively charged proteins and other compounds epithelial cell layer of podocytes if you talk about next to bowman space the podocytes have food processes please note the podocytes have food processes uh, and uh, which have which has a inter process uh, you know tissue or bridge we call it which are bridged by filtration slit diaphragms in between two podocytes there is a slit diaphragm filtration slit diaphragm all right filtration slit diaphragm and around the capillaries is the mesangium containing mesangial cells i told you whenever there is dilation of mesangial cell the glomerular basement membrane surface area increases so this is similar to something similar to monocytes all right so i already told you that uh, the glomerular filtration the glomerular the capillary wall is penetrated uh, endothelium the basement membrane with hydrated spaces and the interdigent food processes are combined with an overall large surface area create a high hydraulic conductivity 
through this high hydraulic conductivity filtration occurs all right which is permeable to water and dissolved solutes which is not impermeable to the proteins passage of large proteins is restricted because of negative charge i already told you in the basement membrane and in addition to this the in addition to the net hydraulic force that is acting on the gfr depends on both the permeability and the surface area gfr depends on both the permeability and the surface area of the filtering membrane the decrease in gfr is most uh, in most disease state is due to a reduction in the membrane surface area please remember this one when the fall in the gfr is because of disease in this membrane in most of the diseases any type of glomerulonephritis actually fall in the gfr is because of uh, any problem related to this membrane surface area and this which also includes a decrease in the number of functioning nephrons so nephrons also decrease in number and also surface area also decreases hence gfr reduces in most of the diseases that uh, are uh, because of various glomerulonephritis now let us talk about filtration fraction next topic of discussion is filtration fraction i think it's important to assess filtration fraction having understood the gfr and ha having understood the renal plasma flow time has come now to understand the filtration fraction filtration fraction of the material uh, that is entering kidney is defined as the, the it, it is the fraction of the material that enters into the kidney which is filtered out is it not filtration fraction so fraction of uh, the substance which has got filtered out and which is entering the kidney out of which how much is filtered out you are calling it as filtration fraction as simple as that so it is nothing but the gfr divided by renal plasma flow gfr divided by renal plasma flow what is gfr just now we saw it is 120 ml per minute renal plasma flow is around 6, 600 ml per minute renal plasma flow the standard physiological renal plasma flow so 120 over 6, 600 if you take it it's around 20% so for any substance the filtration fraction uh, per c is 20% please remember this one now what are the mechanisms that control the uh, dilation and constriction of renal artery now we will have to understand this because i told you when i st when i started my class i told you that uh, there are certain factors which are responsible for there are certain uh, factors which are responsible for you know uh, dilation and uh, constriction of afferent renal arteriole efferent renal arteriole in the form of diseases in the form of if you see uh, pathological mechanisms examiner is going to definitely ask you what are the mechanisms which control the afferent and efferent renal arteriole there are certain humoral mechanisms in that two important identified mechanism the first is angiotensin 2 the second is endothelin first is angiotensin 2 and the second is endothelin angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor please remember this fact all right angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor angiotensin 2 causes a rise in filtration fraction it causes a rise in filtration fraction and its a predominant action is on efferent renal arteriole all right angiotensin 2 acts predominantly on the efferent renal artery this is a very very important point that you need to remember the endothelin next is endothelin is an important uh, vasoconstrictor peptide this endothelin is uh, secreted is mediated through the endothelin et receptor endothelin b et b receptors we all know that this endothelin is pharmacologically exploited in the management of it is used not exploited rather it is used in the management endothelin endothelin receptor antagonists are used in the management of you can uh, you can comment uh, in the in the comment section you can comment uh, i'm asking you a question endothelin receptor antagonists or endothelins are used in the management of which disease related to pulmonary vasculature please tell me the answer in the comment box all right so uh, endothelin 1 it causes renal vasoconstriction and it decreases the renal blood flow hence in such cases wherein you, you you want to use endothelial receptor antagonist it is you have to use it with lot of caution if patient is also suffering from uh, renal disease so here we are discussing humoral mechanism that affect the afferent and efferent renal we are not discussing any disease i'm just correlating this physiology with uh, pathological uh, you know conditions so endothelial receptor 1 endothelial receptor 1 it causes vasoconstriction and hence it decreases the renal plasma flow or renal blood flow 
the afferent renal artery is more sensitive to vasoconstriction action of endothelial 1 rather than efferent. So angiotensin 2 is affecting the efferent renal arteriole. Endothelin is affecting the afferent renal arteriole. Please remember it's an important MCQ. It's a very important MCQ for it, right? Next. Next, let us talk about one very important concept here that is AC inhibitors and ARVs. Uh, in this, why are we discussing this here is to understand the, once we have understood the GFR and the filtration fraction, the pressures, let us try to correlate this with clinically, let us try to correlate with our day-to-day -day daily practice, we use AC inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, we daily use it. Uh, and why are we using it? We are using for hypertension and we are uh, also using it for in certain cases of diabetic nephropathy in patients in whom uh, you want to you know prevent ventricular remodeling in cases of heart failure where you want to prevent ventricular remodeling or in cases of uh, nephrotic syndrome sometimes so why are you using and what are the different functions of these AC inhibitors and ARVs onto the pathology let us try to understand AC inhibitors and ARVs are used for diabetic nephropathy because they lead to a reduction in the glomerular capillary pressure this is what you'll have to understand the glomerular capillary pressure reduction is an important function of ac inhibitors and arvs so this is a very important clinical correlate in this physiology so we all know that glomerular capillary pressure is actually responsible for gfr filtration is it not so uh, and they reduce the damage and fibrosis of the glomerulus please remember this point which will delay the need for hemodialysis so they are actually pro preventing the need for hemodialysis or prolonging the life of this patient who is suffering from renal failure they treat hyperinflation hyperfiltration hyperfiltration phenomenon is one of the important stages of renal failure chronic renal failure if you see gfrs in in a stage of chronic renal failures gfr does not decrease but suddenly it increases hyperfiltration that results in loss of all the important solutes including proteins and all which further causes damage to uh, the kidneys and various other uh, solid organs of the body and that results in further ckd features so here hyperfiltration is actually reduced by ac inhibitors please remember this one and in most of the cases there is a small and transient drop in gfr but a word of caution should be noticed here whenever you are using AC inhibitors in a patient who is all suffering from severe renal disease. We do not use AC inhibitors ARBs in a person who is having severe to very severe renal disease or if the uh, patient is suffering from uh, you know AKI with uh, serum creatinine more than 2. They say more than 2 serum creatinine. We don't usually recommend AC inhibitors or ARBs. Right? Uh, inhibition of angiotensin 2. Now understand this. What is the function of angiotensin 2? Vasoconstriction, is it not? So inhibition of angiotensin 2 leads to vasodilation of the efferent renal arteriole. Where is angiotensin 2 acting? I told you afferent renal arteriole or efferent renal arteriole? Efferent renal arteriole. Where is endothelin acting? Endothelin is more predominantly acting on the afferent renal arteriole. So you should how to remember A for angiotensin, E for efferent renal arteriole. A acts on E and E acts on A. A is not for A and E is not for E. This is what you can easily remember. Angiotensin 2 acts on efferent renal artery starting with E. Endothelin starting with E is more effective on afferent renal artery starting with A. So this is how you remember. So which leads to uh, decreased glomerular capillary pressure. I am talking about angiotensin 2 resulting in vasodilation. Inhibition of angiotensin resulting in vasodilation of efferent renal artery. What will happen if you... So this is... This is your afferent renal arterial, the efferent renal artery. What will happen if you dilate the afferent renal arterial, GFR is increasing. What will happen if you dilate the efferent renal arterial, there is decreased glomerular capillary pressure and decreased GFR. Please remember. It also leads to increased renal plasma flow because of the decrease in the resistance to flow. The pressure downstream from the efferent renal arterial to the peritubular capillaries if you talk about from efferent renal arterial to the peritubular capillaries if you talk about the pressure actually increases because there is decreased resistance in the at the efferent arteriole all right so with this diagram let us try to understand um, what are the uh, various drugs effects of uh, various uh, chemical mediators of inflammation and certain drugs and hormones and proteins which act on the glomerulus, afferent arterial, efferent arterial and all 
uh, and which will cause vasoconstriction or vasodilation let us try to see this all right all right so if you can see this all right so we, here we have got con contraction so chemical mediators which cause contraction of afferent and efferent inner arterioles we have got ltd4 contraction or constriction of efferent angiotensin 2 acts on efferent i already told you norepinephrine and endothelin also act on efferent whereas predominantly endothelin acts on both but predominantly on the afferent so we have got endothelin here angiotensin 2, norepinephrine and adenosine. Adenosine is acting on the afferent arteriole, is it not? Next, the atrial nitritic peptides and PGI2 also cause relaxation. Please remember this one. Also cause relaxation, vasodilation. Nitric oxide, we all know nitric oxide causes vasodilation. PGI2 causes vasodilation. Bradykinin, dopamine, adenosine. Adenosine also causes uh, vasodilation of the efferent renal artery, it was causing vasoconstriction of the afferent renal artery, is it not? Adenosine causing vasoconstriction of the afferent renal arteriole and uh, vasodilation of the efferent renal arteriole, you have to remember this point. Then atrial nitritic peptides, uh, dopamine, radicinin, leukotrienes, glucocorticoids, they act on afferent renal artery. This is what you have to understand. Now, AC inhibitors and ARVs, just now I told you one important point that uh, uh, a person say suppose develops a nephrotic syndrome and you are giving uh, ac inhibitors and it's working wonderfully because ac inhibitors are causing fall in the glomerular capillary pressure fall in the glomerular and they are preventing hyperfiltration they are preventing proteinuria in in case of nephrotic syndrome please remember this part and in case of stable chronic renal failure in case of acute renal failure with uh, high creatinine levels definitely we are not using it uh, ac inhibitors need to be avoided in patients who have severely compromised gfr because of risk of hyperkalemia please remember this part because of risk of hyperkalemia now i'll ask you one question what uh, type of renal tubular acidosis renal tubular acidosis, which type of renal tubular acidosis ac inhibitors uh, cause renal tubular acidosis rta type 4 please remember type 4 what is type 4 renal tubular acidosis i'll discuss different types of renal tubular acidosis later on but type 4 renal tubular acidosis is hyperkalemia hyperkalemia and ac inhibitor or arb are responsible for this hyperkalemia both ac inhibitor and arb cause hyperkalemia examiner will try to confuse you a person you have started ac inhibitor and he developed type 4 renal type 4 rta that is renal tubular acidosis what do you want to do? What is the next step? Switch from AC inhibitor to ARB. Is it true statement? No, because ARB will also cause hyperkalemia. ACE will also cause hyperkalemia. Please remember if a person develops dry cough because of AC inhibitor use, dry cough or allergy because of AC inhibitor use, you can then switch over to ARB and ARB is not going to cause dry cough. In case of dry cough, you can do it. But in case of hyperkalemia, you are not going to do it. Alright, AC inhibitors and ARBs are contraindicated in bilateral uh, renal artery stenosis. Please remember this point. In bilateral renal artery stenosis, AC inhibitors are contraindicated. Uh, why? Because yes, they have they reduce filtration. Is it not? They reduce the filtration and hence uh, the effect of angiotensin 2 is removed and that results in significant drop of GFR actually. And that results in setting up of acute renal failure. So with this, we'll stop our session today and uh, tomorrow we shall be discussing uh, about reabsorption and secretion. See, we have completed understanding of filtration. There are four important functions of kidneys, it's not uh, nephron. That is filtration, reabsorption, secretion and excretion. So what we'll do is tomorrow's class, we'll try to understand reabsorption and secretion for one hour class, one two hours class. Then after that, we'll talk about acid base. Uh, disorders right so stay connected with nextopia medical lectures for further updates thank you so much and if you have not uh, subscribed to my channel uh, please subscribe it thank you